Hey gang, it's Ron from ITMaskia.com and my job is to help each and every one of you guys get certified. If it's your first time here, welcome. If you've been here before, welcome back. So in this video or in these types of videos, what I do is I go through some questions and some answers to kind of help you break down the question types or some of the question types that you'll see on the actual exam. So the exam itself some of the difficulty comes from the way that the questions are posed to you. They may be confusing, it may be frustrating, so this video is here to help. Let's not waste no more time, let's get straight into it. Janice is currently playing See You in Class on her mobile phone. She is about to beat the high score when she receives a text notification. The text states $11,341 has been charged to your account. Items will be shipped in three to four days, Track your order here. She gasps. I didn't order anything. She clicks the link and is instructed to enter her CC info so she can be refunded. What is this called? Nowadays, email scams aren't as efficient as they once were. So a lot of attackers, a lot of hackers, a lot of scammers are actually using something called smishing or SMS phishing. So what they do is they'll send a text message to a random person saying something compelling, something that will make you take action, right? And then phishing, right? There's several different versions. It can be a phishing, whether it's on the phone, it can be phishing, whether it's in person, but this one is smishing, where it's straight through text messages, right? So the long short of this whole thing is that I send you something, something that's gonna make you click a link. Once you click that link, I'm gonna do a couple different things. Maybe make you download malicious code without you knowing, make you enter some information that can compromise you, so on and so forth. So smishing is new somewhat, but that's what smishing is, is just phishing through text messages. SMS phishing or smishing is a form of phishing that targets your mobile phone. Most people are aware of spam and malicious content when it comes to email. What about text? People are more likely to click links found in text messages as opposed to emails. Smishing is a form of phishing in which an attacker uses a compelling text message to trick targeted recipients into clicking a link and sending the attacker private information or downloading malicious programs to a smartphone. Jack is targeting a popular sports betting website. He plans to poison a site's DNS server to redirect traffic to his site. Once users are redirected, malicious code will be downloaded to their devices. What does this describe? So this is farming. Unlike a phishing attack, with a farming attack, you don't have to use clickbait, you don't have to do anything. You literally poison the actual server, poison the actual website that somebody wants to go to. And instead of going to where they wanted to go to, you're gonna redirect them to whatever you want them to go to. Farming is a form of online fraud involving malicious code and fraudulent websites. Cyber criminals install malicious code on your computer or server. This code automatically directs you to bogus websites without your knowledge or consent. Ryan works for a small startup. He is performing an attack on his employer. Here's what he has done. Sent thousands of usernames and passwords to a bunch of authentication servers. He's mostly using commonly used names and passwords. What type of attack has he performed? So if you ever heard the term spray and pray, basically if you got a machine gun, you just shoot a bunch of times hoping that you hit anybody, somebody, that's pretty much the same thing as spraying when it comes to password attacks. Let me do a side note. I'm not 
uh, suggesting that you should take a machine gun and shoot at people or anything like that is just an example. So back to the actual answer. So you're actually trying to spray and pray, like just hoping like, let me just use as many common passwords and usernames I can think of and just throw it at this server and hopefully one of these actually hit. Password spraying is a high volume attack in which the threat actor takes one often weak or common password and tests it against as many accounts as they can. It's the opposite of a brute force attack. Instead of cycling through passwords with the same username, they cycle through usernames with the same password. A password spraying attack is a type of brute force attack where a hacker, much like the name implies, sprays an authentication server with combinations of usernames and common passwords. Attackers often run through lists of commonly used passwords available on the web. Hey gang, if you haven't done so yet, like this video, subscribe, and share this video with anybody who can benefit. I'm gonna give you a few seconds to do that. All right, time's up. Let's get right back to the class. Although Tracy might violate ethical standards or principles from time to time, she believes the moves are made without malicious intent. She sometimes does things that are illegal for the overall common good. What type of hacker is Tracy? So a gray hat hacker usually feels that they are one of the good guys. They usually feel like they are doing something for the common good. Now, sometimes everything that they do may not look like it's on the up and up. Everything that they do may not even be legal, but to them and to the organization that they work for, everything that they do is for a good purpose. May do a little bit of bad, but the good always outweighs the bad when it comes to a gray hat hacker. Gray hat hackers operate somewhere between the extremes of their black hat and white hat counterparts. They don't necessarily want to cause pain or steal from their victims, but they often hack into their target's networks to look for vulnerabilities in a system without the owner's permission or knowledge. What is MTBF? So MTBF stands for mean time between failures. So that is trying to determine how often does the actual device, whatever it is, actually fail during normal operating hours. So that's super important to know just so you know, okay, I need to have this much inventory. I need to have this much backup. You always need to know the mean time between failure just so you know how often things fail so you can be proactive as opposed to reactive so you can get back online or you can replace that device just to make sure that everything is running smoothly. Hey gang, right now I want you to do me a favor. Make sure that you watch my last video which is gonna help you not only pass Security Plus but it's gonna actually help you land a job in the IT field. Other than that, make sure you head over to itmagicky.com, apply to the Zero to Hero program, pick up some free training while you're over there. And other than that, I'll see you in class.